cyber risk management matrix, vulnerabilities, threat landscape, impact of exposure and likelihood of exploitation. Now, a matrix may be used for categorizing and managing cyber risk. Actual matrices are used in actual risk management for safety commonly in workplaces. Now, in this context, we're assessing cyber risk, the likelihood that something is going to attack our system and potentially bring down our network and expose the data about individuals we have stored on our network. Now, we use this matrix as a strategic approach for assisting enterprises in systematically evaluating and prioritizing their cybersecurity efforts as resources are finite, which means we don't have unlimited time, money, and people to solve every issue perfectly. So we've got to manage ourselves based on what are the realities of certain risks or certain vulnerabilities exposing our networks and allowing threats to cause harm. That's what we're trying to weigh up with the use of a matrix. So by assessing various dimensions of cyber risk, including internal and external vulnerabilities, ways that a malicious entity may gain access to a network, the threat landscape, so knowing actual threats that are out there, DDoS attacks, hackers, bots, all of that, and weighing them up on the potential that they could occur. The impact of exposure, if these things do happen, what are likely going to be the repercussions for the organization and the system and its data, and then the likelihood of exploitation. How likely is it that this threat is actually going to happen with the things we have in place? They're the areas that an enterprise needs to weigh up in order to make informed decisions on where to allocate their finite resources, their money, their time, their energy, their people, and specifically implement cybersecurity protective measures. So the training, the tools used, your firewalls, your upgrades in passwords, your multi-factor authentication, your backups, how are you going to balance all that out and where you're going to use it and how thorough will you be? Because we, it is a big weighing act and we want to base it on real likely data. So we're going to use the matrix to do this and that's what we're going to look at now, how the actual matrix is made up. So let's firstly start off with the vertical axis. And here we're looking at the likelihood of exploitation. So how likely is a specific threat likely to occur with our known uh, vulnerabilities that exist within our workplace and things that we can't possibly protect anymore, at least at this point with our current setup and the threats we know that are out there, how likely is something to occur? And at the bottom, we're obviously very likely, unlikely, and then possible this thing could occur. And then we go into the likely category and then very likely and some systems we know have been hit with this threat. And so we know it's out there and it could potentially happen to us. It's very likely. Then going across the horizontal axis, we're looking at what is the possible impact of this exposure. So if this threat occurs and gains access to a system, how much damage is it going to cause? Will it be negligible? Which means nothing really. Okay, is it going to be minor? So some data could be affected and we could have a minor problem here. Is it moderate? Will they have potential access to specific records? And then that could cause some trouble. Is it significant? And then is it severe? Is it going to bring our system to a halt and potentially destroy our data and really cripple our business? So that's what we're talking about with impact of exposure. If a threat occurs, what impact will it have on a specific enterprise? Then in the middle, we actually have the levels of the matrix. So the actual threat levels that are likely going to happen when certain likelihoods of exploitation meet a certain level of impact of exposure. So it's about balancing this out, finding the middle ground across the horizontal and the vertical. So let's start off at the easy end. If I have a specific threat that happens and it's of a negligible issue, okay, if it happens, it's not going to cause much damage and it is very unlikely that this threat's going to occur, it is considered a low threat. There is a low risk associated with it. So this might be a situation related to our physical hard drive within our server room. Okay, it's already in a locked server room. What is the likelihood someone's going to walk in and take that hard drive? Well, it's already in a locked location. If they take that hard drive, we have backups in place, so we're not really going to lose any data. Okay, we're in a remote location, so the chances of this happening are very unlikely. And if the, in relation to losing data, if it was taken, it's pretty much negligible. If, if it's a hard drive that doesn't have any type of user information, it might just be product inventory. There's no risk of a privacy concern there either. So we would put that in the negligible category because then no one's data is being revealed or anything either. It's just product data and it's stored in a locked room. We're in a remote location. 
it's very unlikely that's going to happen. So that would be a low threat. Next, we'll get to the middle ground. So let's say if we had a moderate risk happen, and it's possible this moderate risk is going to cause uh, an issue within our workplace, we would consider that a medium threat. This could be something such as a phishing scam tricking one of our employees. We can't really control that. We obviously have security measures in place. We will train our employees, but we are leaving it in our employees' hands with the emails they get and whether they think they're authentic or not, and them accidentally giving company data to that email. So it is possible that could happen. And if that did happen, they would be giving a login account from our enterprise to a potential malicious party. And that could give them access to information. So we do have training processes in place. There is a moderate risk associated with it. So we will say it is a medium level threat. Okay, it sits there right in the middle. We'll go up now to the more higher impact areas. And firstly, let's say we actually do have a severe threat happen, though it is unlikely. Even though that it is unlikely, it still puts it in that medium to high risk area. So this could be a situation where there have been some botnet attacks around that have attacked some larger organizations. I'm a small business. They're not likely going to target me. So it is unlikely I'm not a big business, but they have targeted larger enterprises. If this happens, it's likely going to bring the network to its knees. So that is why we say it is a severe impact, but because of its unlikeliness, it puts it in the medium to high threat level. So we do have to be ready and have an action plan in place if it does occur, but it's likely not going to happen. Though, if that likeliness changed, and let's say we've got a severe threat again, but now we know that they are targeting everyone. It's still the same botnet attack. They've hit a few of similar businesses to us now, and it's likely they could come for us. Well, that is a high threat. They could cripple us. They could charge ransomware and say we have to pay them to bring our network back online. They could leak our uh, employees or our clients' data if they got control of our network, or they could wipe our data clear and we'll have nothing to work with. This is a severe case, and if it's very likely, we need to prioritize our efforts to make sure it doesn't happen. Update our security, update our encryption policy, change all our passwords within organization, check our firewalls, bring in new security methods, add even more multi-factor authentication to gaining access to our network, you name it. We'll do everything we can. We put all our resources to prevent this threat from happening because it is of a high level and it will lead to severe consequences, especially if it's very likely to happen. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of how a cyber risk management matrix works. We are essentially valuing all the possible risks out there and where to put our energy. We are looking at our vulnerabilities of our current network or enterprise on the potential of a threat getting into the network and what the existing threats are currently out there. And then by looking at these and seeing what the threats are, we are weighing them up based on their likelihood of them exploiting our network and finding a way in through our vulnerabilities and then their potential impact of what they will do to our specific system or our data within our enterprise and how much damage they'll potentially cause. And then by doing this and finding its spot on the matrix, we know how much time, energy, resources, and people to put into those specific areas because they are finite in order to protect our specific network the best possible way we can within the realisticness of how much resources we have within our enterprise.